How's it going, my people? This is your boy, Wired Up, and welcome to another episode of Wired Up TV. Hope you guys got your hands on the steering wheel and keeping your eyes on the road. Handling your business, whether it's schoolwork, stuff in the house, marriage stuff, kids. I mean, job, you have an addiction, you're going to prison, you're going to the county jail for a while to sit down. Whatever it is, handle it. Believe me, if you handle it now, it'll get passed faster and you'll be able to get through it quicker. Now, with that being said, let's get down to it, guys. Now, something I've been really wanting to talk about is a police officer in the Metropolitan Police of Las Vegas, Nevada. A man that goes by the name of Chris Carroll. Shout out to Chris Carroll. Now. Chris Carroll, in his own words, on a Vlad TV interview, recapped everything that happened the night Tupac, uh, Tupac Shakur was allegedly shot in Vegas, September 7th, 1996. Now, he said, in his own words, that when they took Tupac out of the car and laid him down on the ground, he was bleeding a lot out of his chest he can tell he had a chest wound and those are usually pretty bad they bleed a lot and all you can see is him bleeding and all the blood coagulating on the middle of his chest by his medallion that he had on now i'm gonna go ahead and repeat that again he said when they pulled tupac out the car he was bleeding a lot he had chest wounds from what it looked like and he was bleeding, and all of it was coagulating on the middle of his chest. So he was leaking. Why wasn't there any blood on the ground? This is a question we have been asking for ever. And yes, people have stated their opinion. Well, because of this, because of that. But no police officer or crime scene investigator has ever came out and said, Look, this is why there's no blood. Because we do this. Because this happened. Because of that. Nobody. Nobody. So, how are we supposed to put this to rest? This is a question that we all have been asking. Still has never been answered. So, I know you might be saying, well, why up? I mean, we know this. We've talked about this. Yes, we have. But it still has not been answered. So, how are we going to put something on the shelf just because we talk about it? It hasn't been answered to us. This is why the Tupac Alive community doesn't get that many answers. So we're going to start getting them answers, guys. This is what Mr. Chris Carroll said, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you one thing. I've, uh, you know, bled my share of times. I remember one time I was bleeding, you know, pretty profusely on a wound, you know, on my top shoulder. Now, I was wearing a shirt and a sweater and still with that on and not even close to a gunshot wound. I, I've was able to get blood on my sheets. Now, how is it that a way smaller wound can create that much blood and somebody that gets supposedly shot in the chest for some reason doesn't bleed on the ground? The reason the police have not came out or nobody has came out and tried to debunk this is because they cannot. It is simple to say it is not true. This is what happened. Nobody has came out debunked it. Everybody that's saying that is not a professional police officer, a crime scene investigator, or none of that. This proves that Tupac faked his death, September 7th, 1996. This alone here is enough proof. Never mind the other stuff we got that still hasn't been answered. But why is that? Right? Why is it? No blood whatsoever. At all. Why? Another interesting subject brought up to me and the Wired Up TV family by one of our loyal subscribers, Rosemary Sermano. Much, much, much big shout out for Rosemary Sermano. For all the Wired Up TV family and the whole Tupac community she noticed something very interesting that caught her eye easy notorious big 
Tupac Shakur. And recently, a Mexican rapper signed to Ruthless Records that goes by the name of Toker all have passed away. And what do they all have in common? Except for Biggie, right? I know I threw Biggie in there because it is his birthday, March 9th. Wait, not his birthday. Um, it's the uh, the anniversary of his death, the day where he got killed. So, but what those other rappers do have in common is that they all spoke out against the LAPD. They all were part of the rap hip hop movement, which I've told you guys that was being infiltrated by the FBI and the CIA to break it up like they did with the Black Panthers and every other movement that they feel is a threat to them. Okay, And I've told you that Snoop Dogg is one of those agents. They all have in common that they all spoke up against the police. Okay, They all had money and they all were very positive men. Why is it? That in the 90s, these guys were getting knocked off, okay? Toker spoke up against everything, and he had allegedly kind of, you know, stepped down for a little bit or whatever, but was recently deported for no reason. There's no paperwork on why he was deported. He didn't commit a crime. He didn't get caught speeding. He didn't fart in public. He didn't didn't do nothing. And he was deported and then murdered shortly after. All these rappers, Ruthless Records, everybody involved with the Tupac murder, why are they dead? It's something that we have to think and really ask ourselves. And we have to get answers instead of just letting it go by. So the Tupac community is going to get answers. And we're all going to get answers. Again, much shout out to Rosemary Sarmano for that. Something that really caught our eye and our attention. You know what I'm saying? Easy E. With back in the 90s. You know what I'm saying? We believe that Eze e might affect his death. That's what the researchers is, is kind of leading us to. And he used that faking his death. He used that opportunity to teach the kids about HIV and scare them. And I believe he helped Tupac do the same thing. And Tupac used gang violence. But we believe it was the CIA trying to get Tupac. And he is now in Cuba. And also, he has retaliated against a lot of his enemies. Biggie was one of them. How do we know this? Because the murderer of Biggie Smalls is standing behind Tupac Shakur and Suge. It was either Suge Knight that hired him to kill Biggie, or it was Tupac that hired him to kill Biggie. But that's the man that did it, and that's what we believe. He matches the composite to a fucking key. He's even dressed like the Muslim right there. And he's behind them, so you can't say he's just a security guard for the event. Because he would have been in one picture passing by, maybe he's back in another one. But not every single picture right behind him looking at the fucking camera. Okay, this man was part of the hit. And we believe Tupac Shakur survived, got better. And is killing his enemies and getting back at everybody that fuck with him. And he's speaking through other rappers. Preposterous is what a lot of people say. Because... They're afraid to know and realize that the government has been putting the wool over their eyes for years. They've been lying to you. They've been programming you through your TV, through your television, through bogus music. And the television, just look at the name, television programming, television programming. They're programming you with the television. They're telling you right then and there. They not only use television, they use other tools. The media. They try to destroy Tupac with the same image that they perpetuated. That came out of his mouth too. They made him to be this big hard thug. And then when he didn't want to do what they wanted him to do, because he was his own motherfucking man, they try to they try to put a fake rape charge on him. They try to do this, they try to do that. Bad boy of rap. Started to attack him, trying to put him in prison. Same thing they did to Michael Jackson. They try to make him a child molester. Attack the thing he loves the most. Tupac respects and loves women. So they attacked him with that. 
And Michael Jackson loved and respected kids, and they attacked him with that. Guys, peep game. Why do people in Hollywood appear so weak? R. Kelly raping people. This <clears throat> director raping people. Bill Cosby. All these people. Why do they seem, you know, Britney Spears going crazy. Why do they seem so, Martin Lawrence running out with a gun saying they're trying to kill me. Dave Chappelle leaving a brilliant, successful show that had just given them millions and leaves to Africa and leaves it all on the table. Why? Ask yourself because there's something fucked up in Hollywood. These people are not crazy. Calling them crazy is an easy way to be dismissive because you don't understand them, so they're crazy. These people are not crazy. That's dismissive and ignorant, and it's not a proper way to make assumptions and think. We are an intelligent society, and that is ignorant and dismissive. These people are not crazy. There's something fucked up in Hollywood. Speaking of Hollywood, another person that was brought up to my attention was Mr. Little Half Dead. Somebody I really haven't paid that much attention to um, because he never has uh, popped up in my research or anything like that. So I really never paid him much attention. But I was recently asked about him. Wired up. What's up with Little Half Dead? What's the deal with him? Check him out. See what he's all about. So I did. Spoke to some people. Spoke to some other people. I actually spoke to somebody that actually talked to him, chopped it up with them, actually kicked it with them on more than a couple occasions, um, and parlayed with them. And told me a little bit about him. With that, I did my own research, and this is what I got. Okay? Something that stands out about Little Half Dead is the Dead Serious cover. The fact that Tupac Shakur is clearly on there. With Yaki Gaddafi. Knowing that them two faked their deaths and got away together. That's been known for years. Somebody actually spotted them in Africa. Spotted them. A man that knew nothing about rap. And gave their the way they looked to a T. And said that the light-skinned man that was tall was throwing signs. He described the signs on the news. And the video used to be out there. I don't think it's out there anymore. I haven't found it. And he, just, and he described what he was saying. This man can barely speak English. And he clearly said, outlaws. Okay, and he was covering the other man, which we now know is Tupac. Okay, how does he know this and why is he putting that? Okay, why is he putting that? Why? Why is he putting that on his cover? Tupac slanted over, wearing the same clothes he was wearing on that Frank Alexander tape. Not only that, Gaddafi shot in the exact side of the head where he was supposedly shot. That's one thing that made me kind of think this guy's a little fishy. Another thing, another thing goes back to the numeral stuff, which makes me think that Tupac actually has spoken to Little Half Dead or Little Half Dead knows a lot more that meets the eye. That's what made other people get suspicious of him because he knows a lot more than meets the eye. Guys, my joint is getting real small. It's now a motherfucking roach. So y'all know what time it is. Break that joint up, put it in your little, little pipe and spark it up and smoke that. Don't waste it. It's good medicine. <laughs> Keep your head up, guys, and keep positive. Okay, like I said, we think Little Half Dead might know a lot more than he, a lot more than meets the eye. We're gonna get deeper into researching Little Half Dead. Now, I mentioned Little Half Dead and numerals, and the connection to Tupac. He might not know. He might know where Tupac is, or might have spoken to him. Little Half Dead was born September thirteenth, nineteen seventy four. Tupac Shakur passed away in September on the 13th. Supposedly passed away in September on the 13th. Half Dead was born September 13th. There's some connection with the numerals 
But I really think Tupac Shakur has spoken to this man. Why would he put that on his cover? Something, there's some connection with this man. This is why other researchers and other people have gotten interest with this man. Because something popped out about this guy. Right? Tupac made this look confusing. So they can never figure out what it was. The cops know and the CIA know Tupac faked his death. That's why they never arrested nobody on the case. They ain't going to say it because they don't want to look stupid. Guys, keep positive. Don't be afraid to speak up. Don't be afraid to be laughed at because every idea was once laughed at. Fuck them. Be yourself. Be positive. Make that money and handle your business. Keep your head up at all times and always be positive. Do not let nobody take that positivity. Keep a smile on your motherfucking face, y'all. And like always, like I always tell my people and y'all, stay wired up, people. Peace out.